Well, good morning, everyone. Man, good morning, everyone at home. What a great day to be together and to be in God's house. And uh, this morning, we're continuing with what we call week three of our series, Chasing the Carrots or Following the Cross, as we talk about the endless pursuit of more. And this morning, I want to talk to you about an unhealthy pursuit that so many people wrestle with on a daily basis, and that is perfection and performance. And so let me begin so that we can kind of dial in together with just a few simple questions so that you can help begin, so that you can begin to see maybe how perfectionism and how performance has affected you in your own life. So here's the first question. And you can give me some thumbs up, or on the chat stream, you can give some thumbs up if this follows you. How many of you struggle, or have struggled, to live up to the expectations of somebody else? You've struggled, or have struggled, living up to the expectations of someone else. How many of you have struggled, or, or, or how many of you struggle, or have struggled, to live up to your own expectations? Okay? All right? Number three. How many of you struggle or have struggled to live up to what you think God expects? Number four, how many of you honestly are often hard on yourself because you don't get it right and you really want to be perfect? All right, last one. How many of you will show grace to someone else, but you won't show it to yourself? All right? Good. Good. For example, <laughs> when we watch kids fall short, right, or your best friend falls short, what do you say to them? You say these words. Don't what? Worry about it and help me out. No one is what? Perfect. Let's all say it together on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. No one is perfect. No one is perfect. We're quick to show grace to somebody else. But in our own lives, we tend to have a difficulty. We often hold on to unrealistic or unmet expectations. And when we don't live up to our own expectations, we can start to feel shame. We can start to feel guilt. We can start to feel unworthy. But most of all, we start to feel like we're not enough. Anyone in this room ever felt not enough? Amen? All right. Social media absolutely has not helped us when it comes to these issues, right? Of the drive for perfectionism, right? I mean, think about it. How many, develop, how many people develop their Pinterest that based on what their home should look like, right? Or, or how about this? How many of you get on Instagram and then you're just messing with the filters to create the best picture possible, right? I mean, people do this all the time, right? Or how about a Facebook feed, right? It's filled with taking kids to the zoo and craft projects that look perfect and the elaborate themed birthday party with the petting zoo. It just makes me tired to think about those things, right? All the while, you're working a full-time job. You're going to the gym five times a week. You're leading a growth group. You're working at the homeless shelter and you're sponsoring 18 kids through Compassion International, right? And what are you trying to do? You're trying to create the image of the perfect family. Amen? How many of you know this family? Come on now. How many of you know this family, right? <laughs> Everybody looks nice. Everybody's well-dressed. Everything is just perfect, right? And this is the image that so many people try to portray in this world that we live in, when in reality, this may be the better image, right? How many of you know this scene? Come on now. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Okay. If you haven't, if you're not there now, you may have been there in the past. Or, Stephen, you may, this may be your future, right? Here we go, right? Okay. You, you never know. We're in that place, right? We're in that place, okay? And what happens is the carrot of perfectionism dangles in front of us as we try to do one of three things. Number one. We try to live up to the expectations of others. We try to put, number two, put unrealistic expectations on ourselves or others. Or we try to live up to what we believe that God wants me to do in an unrealistic way. And here's what happens when you chase the carrot of perfectionism every single time. 
you always fall short and it's never enough y'all say that with me it's never enough it's never enough you've always fall short think about this think about what you do or what you've seen others do to present the image of perfection of that happy family right how many of you have seen people lie to keep up an image come on now you've seen people lie and pretend that everything is okay when it's what not okay right how many of you have seen people not try something because they're afraid that if they do it they won't get it right the first time so they didn't even try it at all right how many of you have seen people obsess over something to get it right even to the point that it's detrimental to their health or their relationship with other people anyone ever seen that happen before okay you may have right I think a lot of people battle in this culture this issue of perfectionism, and it shows up in three different ways. There's actually some research on this. There's three tip, different types of perfectionism, and what I want you to do is I want to go through the three different types, and as I go through them, I want you to put a check mark if you're in person on your notes, that's me, that's me, that's me, okay? Uh, if you're at home, just try to take, make a mental note of one, two, three. Which one fits you, okay? So here's the first one. The first type is what we call the self-oriented perfectionist. <clears throat> this is someone who puts unrealistic expectations on themselves. And most people do this at the beginning of the new year. I'm going to go to the gym every day of the week. I'm going to walk every day of the week. How about Christians do this all the time? Uh, new year comes around, what do you say? I'm going to read my Bible, what? Every day of the week. And when that perfection doesn't happen, you know what Christians often do? They just stop reading their Bible altogether because now their numbers don't match up on the day that they're supposed to be reading. And so they stop altogether, right? This is the self-oriented perfectionist, right? We feel guilty for not getting it done. We feel guilty for not getting it right. <clears throat> and we will obsess over things that most other people would say, that doesn't really matter. Someone like this, might procrastinate often and struggle with deep feelings of inadequacy. That they are what, church? Never enough. Number two. The second type is what we call the externally oriented perfectionist, right? This is someone who struggles with what other people expect of them. They allow other people's expectations to drive their behavior, to drive their life. They're always worried about what other people think and what other people expect of them. Internally, what happens is they believe that the people around them expect of them perfection. And they will work themselves to the bone to make that happen. Someone like this tends to cope with this intense pressure by self-deprecating humor or making fun of themselves or their work ethic or their appearance. But when you set aside the humor, here's what happens. You often find someone who is very alone and very depressed. You find someone who secretly is desperate because they realize this. No matter how hard they try to make everyone around them happy, it's never what? Enough. And no matter how hard they try to meet the expectations of other people, it's never enough. And no matter how hard that they try to, to channel all that they got for the other person, it's, say it with me, church, never enough. The third type of perfectionist is this, the others-oriented perfectionist. This is someone who imposes their impossible standards on everyone else. Okay? Let me give you an example. This is the person who says this, if I work 12 hours a day, then I expect you to do what? work 12 hours today. If I show up at the office at 6 a.m., I expect what? You to show up off at the office. If I leave at 8, you leave after 8, right? And so this is what happens, is that these impossible standards that you've set for yourself, now you put on everybody else around you, and you expect them to conform to you. This is what the, this is what the other oriented perfectionist does. If I put career first, everyone else should put career first. If I put, you know, whatever, you know, is most important to me, then everybody else should do the same. 
And here's what happens with the other. With the other. You lack empathy. You lack empathy. You cannot understand what somebody else is going through. You can't understand that their life may be different, that their expectations and their dreams and their hopes and their wonders are not the same as yours. And so you can't relate to them, and you can't meet them where they are at. And sometimes you can get abrasive and abusive and manipulating, manipulative, sorry, and uh, you can also get kind of condescending towards people, right? And uh, let me just ask you this. How many of you had parents this way? Now, don't raise your hand because your parent may be there, right? Okay. Uh, but, but I want you to think about it. How many of you grew up in a home that was this way, that your parents' expectations were more than realistic, that were unrealistic, that your parents' expectations of you actually drove you to just the opposite of what they wanted? I see this all the time. I see this all the time, right? This is what happens, right? Some of you have become that parent. You grew up in that home, and now you're doing the exact same thing with your children or with your grandchildren, right? So this morning, some of you may be going, wow, I didn't know that I was a perfectionist, but I am, right? And so hopefully you've checked something, right? And if you haven't checked anything, then, then maybe you know somebody and your life is this way, and maybe this will help them and help you relate to them, right? So this morning, what we're going to see is this, that the core of the carrot of perfectionism is driven by our insecurities and sinful flesh. That our own perfectionist tendencies are driven by our insecurities and our sinful flesh. This is a spiritual problem that requires a spiritual answer. It's a problem with God, and only God can fix it. He is alone as the cure. So let's go to his word and see the cure. How do we get ourselves free of this carrot? Let's go to Romans chapter 3, verse 20. If you got your Bibles, I want to o- encourage you to open up your Bibles. If you're at home, open your Bible to Romans chapter 3, verse 20, uh, because I'm going to have you take some notes in your Bible this morning. If you've got notes here, you can go ahead and open those notes up, and I want to show you something from Romans chapter 3, verse 20, okay? Let's, uh, Taylor's going to put it up on the screen, and let's look at it together. For by works of the law, this is what Paul says, no one will be justified. That means made right. In God's sight. Since through the law comes our knowledge of our sin. It's an amazing verse. Now here's what I want you to do in your Bible. Everybody circle this phrase, no one. All right? Everybody circle the phrase, no one. And y'all say it on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. No one. Now look at somebody else around you and do this. I want you to say this. That means you. That means you. If you're at home, look at somebody in your home and goes, that no one, that means you, okay? No one, no matter who you are, can ever be made right with God by doing what the law says to do. I can't, you can't, we can't. No one. See, what what, what Paul is saying is this. It doesn't matter how hard you try, you can never be perfect. It doesn't matter how much you want other people to be perfect, they won't either. You will never perfectly meet the demands of God's law. In fact, and this is what I've seen in my own life, the more you try to live your life by the law, the more you will find out how sinful you really are. The more you try to do, quote, what's right, the more you will realize what was wrong, okay? This is the way it works, all right? The law, because the law is there to show me my sin. It's to see how much I need Jesus. So I'm going to put a graphic up on the, on the wall here, right, on the screen. The law shows us our sins. And Miles, would you make that big for everybody at home so they can see that? The law shows us our sin. It's like a mirror to the soul. It reveals to me and reveals to you things that we didn't want to know, things that we didn't want to acknowledge, things that we didn't know were true. It shows us our sinful nature. But then the gospel comes in and says, let me show you a savior for me and for you. The law shows me my sin, but the gospel shows me Jesus and how much I need his grace and mercy in my life. Now listen, you can chase the carrot of perfection all you want, but you're never going to get it. And even if you got it, 
it would never be good enough. No matter how hard you try, you can't get there. That's why Paul says in the book of Romans a little bit later, he says this, all have sinned and all have fallen short of the what? Say it with me, church. Glory of God. That means you're not perfect and neither am I. None of us are. That's why in the liturgy, when we gather together on Sundays, what do we say? I a what? I a poor, miserable sinner. Confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities. And this matters. And here's why. I'm going to show you exactly why it matters. This matters because you will never stop chasing the carrot of perfectionism until you clearly see how fallen you are, how sinful you really are. That's why God's law matters. It matters because it shows us what we would normally ignore and not see about ourselves. And once you see yourself clearly as God does, here's what happens. Once you see this, then you can acknowledge some very important things. And here they are. Number one, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. And neither are you. There is something very freeing to wake up in the morning and say, I am not perfect. Let's all try it together. Ready? I am not perfect. And if I am not perfect, okay, then I can also acknowledge this. I will never be perfect. And neither will you. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. And guess what? This side of heaven, we will never be perfect. And if I can start to get my head around, I know that seems so simple, church, and I know it's like you kind of maybe are sitting there going, well, duh. But here's the thing. Until you really grab a hold of, I'm not perfect, and I will never be perfect, until you grab a hold of that, right, you will never be able to stop expecting it of yourself and others. Let me say that again. Until you really embrace the fact that you're not perfect and you will not be perfect until this, the other side of heaven, you will never stop expecting it of yourself and others. And the damage you do to your soul and the damage you do to other people's relationships will never end until you start embracing this. Instead of chasing this carrot, maybe instead our focus can be on the one who is perfect. Let's go back to Romans 3 for just a moment. Let's look at it together. But now, the righteousness of God has been made known apart from the law. This is really kind of deep stuff here, right? A righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. What is Paul saying? Paul is making it so clear that I am made right with God and you are made right with God, not by your religious efforts, not by doing good works, not by going to church, not by eliminating bad stuff from our lives, not by saying a prayer. You are made right with God. You have a right relationship with God, even though you are totally imperfect, through faith in Christ. Faith in the one who lived perfectly for you. Faith in the one who sacrificed his life for you. Faith in the one who suffered and died on the cross for you. And so let me put it on the screen so you can see it really clearly, right? My perfectionism, right? That's my expectations of myself, my expectations of others, my expectations of God, right? My perfectionism is what I do. And at the end of the day, watch this. It will never be enough. It never will. On the flip side, his cross, right? What he does is always enough. Perfectionism believes this lie. If I just try harder, if I do better, then everything will be okay. How many of you have told yourself that lie? If I just try harder, if I just work harder, if I just do better, everything will be okay. You can kill yourself doing that. On the other hand, the cross speaks this beautiful truth. He loves you. He's enough. He forgives you. He accepts you. He makes you perfect. Perfectionism says, I need God's approval, but I'm never going to get it that way. The cross says, I'm forgiven and God is well pleased with me. 
When you chase the carrot of perfectionism, both for yourself and others, you know what it does? It puts a lot of pressure on your life. Let me ask you just very, just in a real moment here. How many of you have felt the pressure of chasing this carrot? You just feel it inside. I got to work harder. I got to do more. I got to be better. I got to de- you know, X, Y, and Z. I got I to make sure everything gets checked off on the checklist. I got to make sure everything's organized in a certain way. I got to make sure everything's together, right? And I'm feeling the pressure on the inside because it's never enough. And deep down, I don't think I'm enough. The cross says, though, you don't need to be perfect. And once you can give up that chase of perfection, when you start believing that Jesus is perfect for you and that he has set you free, all the pressure to perform for God and for others is completely removed. And that's an incredible way to live. See, when you get all the pressure off, now you can just live freely. And that's what God wants in the first place. He wants you to live freely in the gospel. And I'll give you a simple example. When you see the pressure, this is the pressure, right? I'll give you an example how this works. Pressure says this, I got to go to church. That's pressure, right? That means I got to get up in the morning, I got to get dressed, I got to get ready, I got to do all the things, right? I got to go to church. That's pressure. That's perfectionism. That's because I feel like I got to go because I got to do something for him. Freedom says this, I get to. I get to. I don't have to. I get to. And I can't wait. And I'm looking forward to it. That's when the pressure's off. And now I can freely come and enjoy the, what I'm doing and what God is doing in me. That's the difference between perfectionism and his pleasure. I want to tell you a story. And I want to tell you a story that I think captured this really well, right? In Luke chapter 10, we meet two sisters who are hosting a dinner party for Jesus. One is named Mary, and the other is named what? Martha, right? Very, very common story, very, very familiar story, right? Many of you, if I had to ask, do you relate more to Martha or do you relate more to Mary? Almost always people say, I relate more to who? Martha, right? That's who most people relate to. Martha is the one who's stressed out because Jesus is coming to dinner. Martha is the one who's running around like a chicken with her head cut off because everything has to be what before Jesus gets here? Perfect, right? Some of you know this feeling. How many of you have made a mad dash to clean your house before somebody's come over? Come on now. How many of you got that room where you throw everything into so nobody sees? Come on now. Yeah, there we go. I know that feeling, right? Okay. All right. Martha, (laughs) Martha was doing what many of you would do. Every detail's just got to be right. Everything had to be perfect. And her perfectionism is seen not only in her actions, but also in her relationship to her sister. This is where it comes out. Everything had to be perfect. So when Jesus get there, when Jesus gets there, there's Mary, and she's like, come on, Jesus, come on inside. And they sit down. And they start to talk with one another, and Jesus is teaching, and Mary is listening, and she is just content. She is enjoying the moment. She's enjoying this time with Jesus. But Martha is moving around like, like, like just busting tail to get everything done. Now watch what Luke says about Martha. This is what she says. Martha was this, distracted with much serving. That's what perfectionism will do. Perfectionism will always distract you from what God is doing because you are more concerned about something else. When you are driven by perfectionism, what happens is you are more concerned about the it than the who, and therefore you are distracted. You are distracted with much serving. So she goes up to Jesus, and I love this. She goes up to Jesus and says this. She asks a question, Lord... Do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? And listen, y'all, come on now. I want you to listen closely to the answer because this answer will free you in a very powerful way. The way that Jesus responds to this question says everything that you and I need to hear today so we can stop chasing this carrot of perfection. And watch this. Martha, Martha, 
You are what? Anxious and troubled about many things. When you chase the carrot of perfection, either in yourself, with others, or with God, here's what happens. You are anxious and troubled about many things. And this is what God says. But only one thing is needed. Only one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen it. Martha is sitting there, standing there next to Jesus. Mary is by his feet. And, and, and I can just see this scene play out, right? Martha, you're so worried. And you're so upset about all the details. You can almost hear Jesus says, that doesn't matter. Martha, stop worrying about things that don't matter. Martha, stop being distracted by things that don't matter. Why are you worried, church, about things that will fade away into eternity? Why are you worried about things that will never last? Think about this. How many of you have ever thrown a dinner party and you got your house all cleaned and that by the time that people left, your house was messier than when it began? Amen? Why are we worried? Why are we worried? Jesus says, Martha, Martha, there's only one thing worth being concerned about, and Mary has chosen it. She chose the Savior who says, look, stop beating yourself up with unrealistic expectations. And maybe some of you need to hear that today. Stop beating yourself up. She chose the Savior who said, you know what? It's okay to let go of these things. She chose the Savior who said, come to me. You don't have to perform for me, Martha. You don't have to have the best dinner, Martha. Your house doesn't have to be clean, Martha. You don't have to spend all day getting ready for growth group. Come on now. There's one thing that is needed. There is one thing that matters. And I don't really care all about the rest. We have a Savior whose only expectation of us is that we just simply acknowledge, listen, I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. I am broken and I need your healing. I'm not perfect, nor ever will be, but you are, and that's all that matters. The carrot of perfectionism is when Satan whispers in your ear these words. You can go back one slide, Taylor. The carrot of perfectionism is when Satan whispers in your ear and my ear, you're never enough. You're never enough. You're never going to be successful enough. You're never going to be a good enough boss. You're never going to be a good enough employee. You're never going to be a good enough wife. Never good enough husband. You're never a good enough friend. You're never there. You're never, going to be in the be You're never going to be enough as a dad or a mom or a son or a daughter, a brother or sister, pastor, friend, mentor. Satan wants to whisper in your ear, and I'm, I'm just going to be honest, it's a, it's a deadly whisper. I want you to think about this for just a moment, both here and at home. How many of you wake up in the morning and you realize Satan's whispering in your ear and he's saying, you're never enough. You're not enough. You go to bed at night and you think about all the things that happened during the day and the only thing that sticks with you is these words, you're not enough. You're not enough. The carrot of perfectionism will tell you day in and day out, you're never enough. And I have seen it and I'm going to tell you, I have watched people die because of this that they will push, pull, drive, work themselves to the bone because they believe that they are never enough. The cross is different. The cross says to me and the cross says to you today that Jesus is enough. Can we all say that together in a beautiful affirmation on the count of three? One, two, three. The cross is enough. His love for you is enough to heal your soul. 
His love for you is enough to get you through your worst days. His righteousness for you is enough to cover over your desperate need for perfectionism. His forgiveness for you is enough as it covers and removes all your sins, especially all of your sins that are unrealistic expectations of self and others and God. And so as we leave here today, what I want to do is I want to encourage you to do one of three things. And here's the first thing. If you are the person, and only you know this, if you are the person who puts unrealistic expectations on yourself, and if maybe you are like, I don't know if I do, then just ask the person next to you. They'll tell you. If you put unrealistic expectations on yourself, on yourself then can I just encourage you to do this? Show yourself some grace today. Show yourself some grace. Because God does. And if God is going to show you some grace, then guess what? You can show yourself some grace. And by showing yourself some grace, you can say to yourself, it's okay. It's okay. Listen to Jesus when he says you're anxious and distracted by many things. Not everything has to be perfect. Not everything has to be organized. Not everything has to be neat. Not everything has to be a certain way. It is absolutely okay. Number two, if you're the kind of person who has unrealistic expectations of others, if you have the mindset of my way or the highway, okay, if you have that mindset is I'm going to do it this way and so will everyone else, then here's what I want to encourage you. Let it go. Let it go. And if you're having a hard time, listen to the theme song for Frozen. Let it go. Let go of those expectations. And along the way, here's what I'm going to just really encourage you to do because this is going to be even more important. If you are the kind of person who puts unrealistic expectations on the people around you, especially family, here's what I'm really going to encourage you to do. I'm going to encourage you today to go to that family member and say, you know what, I'm sorry. I put unrealistic expectations on you and I need your forgiveness. And when you do that, you are laying down the carrot it's the only way. It's the only way. Because otherwise you're going to keep doing it again and again. Lay it down. If you do that with your spouse, ask for forgiveness. If you do it with your kids, ask for forgiveness. If you do it with the people you work with, ask for forgiveness. If you do it with friends, ask for forgiveness. And then lastly, if you're the person who has unrealistic expectations with God, that you think you somehow have to earn his favor or earn his approval, I just want you to hear this. There's a better way. There's a better way. You can't earn God's approval. You can't lead a perfect life. Perfectionism will always leave you feeling like it's not enough. But I'm here to tell you today and every day, Jesus is enough. And the cross is enough. And you have his approval. Let's pray. Y'all stand with me. Let's pray. If you're at home, I want to encourage you to stand and let's pray together. Father God, help us today. Help us to embrace your love. Help us to embrace the cross. Help us to start to believe that the cross is enough. And my prayer today, God, is that you will teach us and show us and help us to let go of this carrot of perfectionism. God, I'm going to pray for everyone who puts two, whose, whose expectations that they put on themselves are so unrealistic that it's driving them crazy and it's driving everyone else around them crazy. God, I'm just asking you, help them put the carrot down today. Let them know it's okay. Let them be able to experience grace this morning to show themselves a little grace, to show themselves a little favor, to know that it's okay to not be perfect because they'll never will be perfect. And so to let it go. And God, my prayer also is if there's somebody in our room or somebody who's worshiping with us online and they're really struggling today in how they treat other people and the expectations that they have of other people, either expectations that they don't communicate, expectations that are unrealistic, expectations that are unfair, my, my, my prayer is that you'll just show that to us. And you'll, and, you, and you'll encourage some, some, rep, some healing today in relationships that have been damaged because of unrealistic expectations. 
God, I just pray that you'll just move in people to go to other people and say, I am sorry. I am sorry for these expectations that I put on you that were unfair, that were unrealistic, that were uncommunicated. That was not you. That was me. And I, what I did was wrong. And I just ask you for your forgiveness. But more than anything else, God, my prayer is that if anybody here, anybody who's worshiping with us online who believes that they're not enough for God, may you just remind them just remind them today. Help them to start to believe that God is enough for them. That the cross is enough. And I don't have to earn your favor. I don't have to earn your approval. I already have it because of Jesus. Help me to embrace that today and every day. And all of God's people said, both here and at home, amen. Amen. Amen.